Hi everyone, I'm volcanologist Dr Janine Krippner and this is my guest. Hi everyone, I'm Topa. Uh, my name is actually Thor Björk Augustdóttir and I'm from Iceland. I am a um, uh, volcanologist and a seismologist, so actually a volcano seismologist. Um, so I work at Iceland Geosurvey and I also do projects with the University of Cambridge and the University of Iceland on, you know, on volcanoes and geothermal fields. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have something fun that we're going to do because I get a lot of questions about this. We're going to do a short tutorial on how to say the Icelandic volcano name, <laughs> since I have a legitimate Icelandic expert. So how do you say the Icelandic volcano name? The Icelandic volcano name is Eyjafjallajökull. Okay, so take me through how to say this slowly so that everyone can practice at home as well. So I remember when it was erupted, it was called E16 in the American media. But um, what I want to tell you first before we do the tutorial is what it actually means. So it means island mountain glacier. So Icelandic, we concatenate often the words together. So if you say Eya, Eya, that means island. Yatla, Yatla, very good. You're really good. <laughs> means <laughs> uh, mountains in pl pl plural. Uh, and Yökull, Yökull. Oh, yeah, that's good because that's such a difficult uh, pronunciation in the end. That means a glacier. So we have island, mountain, glacier. So it can be helpful to like, split it up into three parts. So if I say, say it and then you repeat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So if I say, Eyjafjallajökull. 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 <laughs> That's quite good, actually. It's it's one of the most difficult names. You have all the different sounds in Icelandic. So Eya is easy, right? Eya, yep. Um, if you say Eya, 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 Nope. <laughs> um, I'm so glad I wasn't a news presenter during that time. Eya, 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 yeah. So what I say to my um my, many of my friends, you can you can try to pronounce it, and then you refer to it as Eya because usually we Icelanders would understand that. Um, but the last word is the most difficult one. So you're doing Eya Fjatla actually quite fine, but you could because we have a double L in the end. So if I if I change to conjugate the words in Icelandic, so if I say Eya Fjatla you could. I say that Eyjafjallajökull. Eyjafjallajökull. Yeah, that's actually better. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so once again. Eyjafjallajökull. Oh, up here. Yes, that's very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope everyone at home has been practicing and laughing along with me. <laughs> Look at that. It's here. <laughs> on my little map. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm going to have to practice some more. Um, so you have some really neat stuff to tell us about volcanism in that area as well, don't you? So, yeah, I love volcanoes. It's a nice sun that's all around. Um, for those who, who don't know Iceland, it's on a state boundary, so it's a divergent state boundary. And it's an upwelling mantle plume, which enhances the um, sort of volcanic activity. So we have lots of volcanoes, uh, sort of a volcanic belt that goes through the country, uh, which is the most active. Um, so I've studied a few volcanoes in Iceland. And the interesting thing is that when you have eruptions, they can either occur from the top of the volcano, like here, if you imagine a triangle, but actually in Iceland, most of the time, they occur sort of the flank side, actually quite far from the volcano. So the project I did for my PhD, the 2014 to 2015 Barðabunga Hólhraun eruption in northern Iceland, so that's also quite a mouthful. Um, there you have a volcano under the ice, uh, had unrest, but then you had uh, magma intrusion at depth, 50 kilometers, it went 50 kilometers from the volcano to where it actually erupted. So what we used 
earthquakes, micro earthquakes, to track the molten magma underground. And sort of, if you didn't have any geophysical, um, so, yeah, and geophysical methods and science to understand and study volcanoes, you would probably think that the eruption site would be the volcano, but that's just the eruption site, and the volcano is actually 50 kilometers away, and the magma travels all that way underground. I think that's so amazing. <sighs> Absolutely. Um, the same thing happened with Nova Rupta Katmai, and that was clearly a very different type, style of eruption, but that goes to show how important geophysics is. So thank you so much for the overview. A lot of fun. Now the internet can laugh at me as well. Thank you, you for joining one more go. Oh, one more go? Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. After you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'll link to her on Twitter and I'll have her name there so you can ask any more questions. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks. Bye. Bye.